Hello everyone. So in this episode we are going to talk about one of the major concerns uh, that you and me have faced when you are developing serverless web applications using API Gateway and Lambda. Well, that is nothing but Lambda cold starts. So, in this episode we are going to talk about two major ways that we can prevent or minimize Lambda cold starts. One of the ways is Lambda ping or the CloudWatch event that is uh, scheduled to ping the Lambda Uh, to uh, minimize the cold starts and the second one is the newest one uh, that is using lambda provision concurrency so here's the agenda first we'll talk about what is cold start and what's causing that real quickly and then we'll talk about these two main solutions the lambda ping and lambda provision concurrency and we will also have a look at how to use a serverless framework to configure these two solutions and after that we will do a cost comparison now i think this is the uh, main part of this video because i wanted to show you the different costs that is involved in both of these approaches and finally we will talk about the best practices that you can follow to minimize the lambda cold start with lower costs so that's the agenda so if you like this type of videos guys make sure you subscribe to my channel because i am releasing a video on every week so without further ado let's get started all right guys so let's first understand what is lambda cold start now imagine this scenario you have this client a web or mobile client and it is sending a get request to an api gateway and this api gateway then forward that request to a lambda function now imagine that uh, this client wants to get some to dos from a database so this lambda function will calling out to a database and get the to dos list and send it back to the client So in an ideal scenario what client expects is as soon as he sends the get request the lambda function will kick in call the database get the list of to dos and send it back to him as soon as possible now this could be exactly the case if we could replace this lambda function with a backend server let's say you have an express server that is running inside a virtual machine or a physical server and then that would exactly be the case because this virtual server or the server is running all the time so it is long running but in case of this lambda the lambdas are not long running so it get only invoked by an event so in this case this http event so the steps of this process is little bit different for example i have listed down the steps on the right side so let's go through that so as soon as the request is forwarded to the lambda by api gateway the aws lambda service so i'm not talking about the lambda function here but the lambda service it will first check whether there is a free execution environment available now what is an execution environment really now in order to run the lambda you need to have some kind of an environment with a runtime configured for example now imagine that your lambda function is written in node js then you need to have node js uh, runtime installed if it is java then it is java right so uh, we need to first have this container or an execution environment so the lambda service will first check whether there is a free execution environment if it couldn't find a free execution environment so it's going to create an execution environment and then once it is completed it's going to download the lambda code now when you are deploying a lambda function we will bundle all the dependencies and the lambda code and push it to aws so here that code will be downloaded to that particular execution environment and after that it's going to initialize it so at this initialization process it's going to run the code that is outside the lambda handler function and after that it's going to run the handler function code which is exactly the business logic that we have put it into the in this case uh, get to do lambda so if you examine these five steps 2 3 4 that means creating a new execution environment download in the lambda code and also initializing it that is what caused the call starts now imagine as soon as the first request is been served there will be another subsequent request from a different client so it will go through these steps again but in this time the previous execution environment will still be available now uh, once you have an execution environment so that will be lasting for about 10 to 15 minutes uh, it's like short time So during that time if you get another request the same execution environment will be used. So here it will first check whether there's a free execution environment. So in this case it's going to find it because it has already completed the first request and then 
it will directly starts running the lambda handler function code so two three four steps will be skipped and thereby we call it that's a warm start and there's a one other thing that you really should remember so imagine now uh, there's a request already executing and it is not yet completed so while that is being executed if you get another request then this execution environment is no longer free so even though you already have an execution environment since it has something process going on AWS Lambda is going to create another execution environment to serve the current request. So that new execution environment has to go through all these call start steps. And at that time we call that Lambda concurrency is increased by one. Because right now two parallel requests are being handled by Lambda and you have two separate execution environment. And if there's another request coming alone while those two have been executing, then another new execution environment will spin up then the concurrency will be three. I hope that is clear. So our next question is how can we prevent or minimize this call start? Well, the first solution is to use a CloudWatch event rule. So here what we are going to do is we are going to use AWS CloudWatch service and from there we are issuing a scheduled event. So this scheduled event is going to ping the Lambda on a schedule that we have defined. So this could be every five minutes or 10 minutes or so on. So what we are going to accomplish with this approach is to keep our existing execution environment hot or active. Now earlier I mentioned an execution environment has about 10 to 15 minutes of uh, idle time. And if there were no any lambdas invoked during that time, that execution environment will be removed. So here in this approach, since we are doing this ping every five minutes or so, that execution environment will keep active for some time. But however, we have to remember that AWS Lambda will remove this execution environment time to time, probably in every one hour or two hours. So even if that happened during that one hour or two hour, uh, this Lambda execution environment will be active. So all our Lambda function that is being invoked will have warm starts. So that is the first approach. Now the second approach or the second solution is to use Lambda provision concurrency. So in this case, we are going to create pre-warmed execution environments. Now here we can define how many pre-warmed environments do we need. And when we define, let's say five pre-warmed environments for a particular Lambda function. So what it's going to do is it's going to create an execution environment and then it's going to download all the Lambda code with the dependencies. And then it's going to run the init or the initialize code as well. So when we have a pre-warmed environment, Whenever we get a request from the API gateway, the Lambda service do not have to provision all this environment all over again because it can use one of these pre-warmed environments and just execute the business logic in it. Now there's one important thing to remember. For each and every AWS account, you get 1000 provision concurrency. So this is a soft limit. You can like increase it with a support request. But however, we get about thousand provision concurrency. So uh, when you allocate provision concurrency to your AWS Lambda function, so that will be deducted from your account level provision concurrency. So now that we know about these two solution, so let's see how we can configure it using serverless framework. All right, guys. So here I have created two serverless services, one called Lambda ping and the other one called provisioned. So if I go to the Lambda ping and we have the serverless YAML, the configuration file, in the function section where we define our Lambda functions, we have the code of get to do by ID function. So that is there in the handler dot get to do by ID. So if I just quickly show you that. So this is the uh, function that is exported by the handler function and the code inside the handler function is what that get executed in a warm start. Now code outside the handler function, let's say the connect to database function where it is being called at this line has been executed at initialization. And when we are calling it again, as you can see, even in the code, it is just returning the database variable that is populated with the connection. So how can we set up a CloudWatch rule to execute this function in a schedule? So that's very easy. Uh, for that, we are going to use this plugin called serverless plugin warmup. So you can install it with NPM, NPM my serverless plugin warmup, and then you can easily configure it under the custom configuration. Now have a look at this configuration. 
So I am enabling warming up for all the functions that I am defining in this serverless service. And if I want to disable it for uh, separate functions, I can do it at function level as well. But when you define it here, it is enabled for all the functions. Then under the events array, we can set up the schedule. So here we are defining a cron job. So in this case, what it says is run this Lambda warming up function in every five minutes from Monday to Friday between eight in the morning to 5.55 in the evening. So you can change this cron expression as the way you want really. So this is how we are setting up the Lambda ping or the CloudWatch event. And in the other folder, I have the provision serverless configuration. Now in order to enable some provision concurrency for a particular Lambda function, we can easily use the provision concurrency attribute in the serverless configuration file. Now in this example, we are setting up the provision concurrency to 5 so that it's going to create five pre-warmed execution environment for this particular Lambda. So this is how you configure both provision concurrency and the CloudWatch scheduled event in serverless framework. But of course you can use CloudFormation, CDK, SAM, and even AWS console itself to set up these configurations. All right guys, so now let's compare and contrast the cost between these two solutions. So for this cost comparison, I'm going to consider 100 lambdas that is executing for one second. And each of these lambdas has one GB memory allocated for them. So let's compare the cost between lambda ping as well as the provision capacity cost. Now in general, you and me both know lambda charges for execution. In lambda ping, it charges the normal lambda cost. So that is, it's going to charge you 0 0.000017 to execute one lambda for a duration of one second. Now in this example, let's imagine we are pinging the lambda in every five minutes, right? And this lambda memory is one GB as I already mentioned. So now if we calculate how many times this lambda get invoked per day, we can easily calculate it. We have 24 hours. So into 60, that gives the how many minutes do we have per day? And uh, we will divide it by five. So we'll get 288 times of lambda invocations. So 288 times this Lambda get invoked. Now, since each and every invocation, it runs for one second. So this is one second duration. We can calculate the uh, cost per day, 288 times this amount. So that is $0.0049. So if we calculate it for 100 Lambdas for 30 days, it add up to $15. So in this example, to run 100 Lambda for one second, which has one GB memory allocated for each Lambda, it's going to cost us $15 per month. Now let's look at the provision capacity costs as well. Now the most important thing I want you to focus is the duration cost. So for normal Lambda invocation, it charge you $0.0000017 per one gigabyte second. But here in the provision capacity, it is lower than that. Do you see, just count the number of zeros. We have one, two, three, four zeros, but here we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So in terms of duration cost, the Lambda provision capacity is lower. But however, there is an additional cost aspects. So that is called provision concurrency cost. Now AWS charged this to maintain those execution environments. Because unlike in normal Lambda execution, where the execution environment spin up when there's an event uh, in provision capacity, you have to maintain or AWS have to maintain those execution environment that we provision ahead of the time. So uh, they're going to charge 0 0.123450 and $42 per gigabyte second for provision concurrency. So let's not consider this at first, but uh, we'll consider the duration cost. And uh, here also we'll imagine our function will receive request in every five minutes from the client, right? And if we calculate it again, uh, how many times it's going to invoke. So it's going to invoke 288 times because it's the same calculation as earlier. And uh, when you calculate the cost per day, 288 times multiplied by this duration cost, not the previous one. And that is actually lower than what we had earlier. And then we can calculate the monthly cost for 100 lambdas. So we just have to multiply this amount by 30 days and 100 lambda. So that turns out to be $8. So you can see this is cheaper than uh, normal lambda cost when it comes to the duration cost. 
but however we have to calculate provision capacity cost as well so when it comes to this provision capacity cost guys the aws will start charging you as and when you set a uh, provision concurrency for your lambda function so it starts charging as soon as uh, it is active and then it will keep charging you until you disable it so in this example this 100 lambdas will have one provision concurrency and that will be provisioned throughout the day so taking that into the consideration we can first calculate the provision capacity duration per month this is for one lambda so per month we have 30 days and we can multiply it by 24 so then uh, we get the number of hours per 30 days then again we'll multiply it by 60 then we'll get number of minutes per 30 days again we multiply it by 60 then we get this number of seconds that is equivalent to the number of seconds for per month so this number of seconds you will be charged for provision capacity for per lambda so if we calculate the cost so we have to multiply this amount by the provision capacity it's not capacity really this is uh, provision concurrency and this also concurrency so we can multiply that number of second into uh, the gigabyte per second cost so that's turn out to be 11 dollars so now this is only for one lambda so we have to multiply it again by 100 uh, to get the provision concurrency cost for 100 lambda so that is turn out to be 1100 dollars so the total cost per month we have to add up uh, 1100 plus uh, 8 so that is uh, 1108 dollars so it's a huge cost do you see so we have to be really careful when provisioning our lambda functions so in the next slide let's discuss the best practices so here we want to make sure our lambda call starts are minimum and as well as our costs are minimum too so as one of the best practices i already told you like do not apply provision concurrency for all the lambdas without even inspecting uh, the duration and the the frequency of those lambdas really so uh, you really have to apply concurrency or the provision concurrency for the frequently invoked lambdas because as you have already seen the lambda provision concurrency duration cost is lower but if those lambdas are rarely being invoked then still again you have to pay for those entire time for provision concurrency cost so that's a huge cost as we have already seen it and one other thing that you can actually uh, do is you can provision concurrency based on a schedule and that can be achieved with application auto scaling so with uh, application auto scaling service we can have a cron expression uh, stating at what point you need your provision capacity to be applied to your lambda it could be like monday to friday from 8 am to 5 pm for example so you don't have to pay for provision concurrency at the time that is not being used so what can we do with our other lambdas that are not as frequently invoked well we can use lambda ping there as well right? because there's no any restriction uh, where we cannot use both of these lambda ping and lambda provision capacity well we can further set up a cron expression to minimize our lambda ping costs as well now you have already seen it i showed it in the previous example and other than that in both of these solution the lambda cost is based on the memory that you have allocated for the lambda to identify the ideal memory that you should allocate to your lambda function so that way you don't always have to allocate a higher amount of memory that will add you more cost so this is what i want to convey to you in this video guys so if you follow these practices it will help you to minimize your lambda call start as well as the cost so i hope you will find this video useful and i'll see you in another video